So Nebbiolo, Nebbiolo is the great variety, uh, the, is the great variety with which you make Barolo and Barbaresco. Uh, I might sound a bit redundant if some of you are wine experts and some other not, so I like to repeat these things that are somehow obvious, but it's better to remember. Nebbiolo is the great variety. Always remember in Italy, we don't tend to call the wines with the name of the, of the great variety but the name of the place or the type of wine as an average. Chianti is not a great variety, Brunello is an agri it is, it's not. Montepulciano is a nobile, the Montepulciano is not a great variety. And Barolo and Barbaresco are two villages are made with one great variety called Nebbiolo. Allora, Nebbiolo, I used to say Nebbiolo is a really particular, I call the Nebbiolo the old and nasty man, it's a great variety, it doesn't really adapt to places. And uh, it's... It, it, it really, really significantly changed based on the climate and the soil. Uh, I'll give you a, an example. Why grape varieties are divided mainly in two big families. Efficient, adaptable, easygoing, comfortable grape varieties. Wherever they plant it, they give you some results. Chardonnay is one of them. Cabernet is one of them. Cabernet Sauvignon, I'm talking about Merlot. That's why these grape varieties are. Syrah is another one. But Syrah, I might discuss about it. I might, I might. But as an average, those grape varieties, no matter where they plant, they give you a, a decent result. Maybe not interesting, but drinkable. That's why they can become so famous all over the world. Not just for this reason, but that's one of the reasons. Other grape varieties like Nebbiolo, like Pinot Noir, like uh, I would say even Sauvignon. Um, we need to discuss about Sauvignon one day. They tend to really change uh, a lot um, and the result can be terrible if the climate and the soil are not ideal. And uh, I would say that there are only three places in the world where Nebbiolo, in my experience, they can get some significant result. Is the area of Lange, of course, Barolo and Barbaresco, over here. And then the area of Valtellina, north of Milan, that is over here. And all the, this northern area, like the, the Colline Novaresi, we have the... Um, the Gattinara, we have the Bocca, we have the Bramaterra, we have the Lessona. Each, uh, in every one of this region has slightly different laws. You can technically add uh, up to sometimes even 20% and 40% if when we talk about Bramaterra, other grave varieties. The purists, they tend to make just wine with the Nebbiolo. Castello Conti, those uh, I call it the, 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 the three sisters because they are three sisters. Now one is actually went to Germany, so there are only two running the winery. They live in this fairy tale castle that was made by their father who passed away unfortunately recent 10 years ago. And he created this like middle age castle, but he was built in 1964. It seems that there's a lot of secret passage in it. I didn't see it in the, I didn't film it on the video, but it's interesting. Their wines are really, really unique. Uh, they tend to be really light, delicate, and persistent at the same time. And at the same time, so you have a perception of the Biolo that is completely different from what we usually think in a Biolo is with those strong tannins. For example, comparing with the Barbaresco, the sequence that I'm actually opening the bottles is will be the sequence I might suggest if you decided to open all the bottles one night with some friends. That you can want to be generous. You can be like generous. Shauna Gardner, who's upstairs yeah. with us right now, who's done a ton of these. Ah, that's right. She's doing like some Italian nights. But my opinion, you can share the price of the of, of, of the of the of the wine club. It's gonna be like twenty dollars per person and that's right. And and it's nice. nice. I mean, and also why you drink alone. This is about you know, you can do one one bottle a week or even all one night and repeat the one of the experiences similar to what we do here. Well long okay, first today. Yeah, you want some? So Colline Dovaresi. Uh, Colline Novaresi Spanna. Spanna is the name of the grave variety because they are called it Spanna over there. And uh, Chiavennasca is called, for example, in Valtellina. Everyone has this different way to call the same grave variety. They pretend, wow. in a way, they're right because they pretended that, that Nebbiolo was there even before uh, Lange, Barbarola, and Barbaresco. For sure, in the 18th century, Valtellina and Gattinara they were producing more Nebbiolo than Barolo and Barbaresco. French used to come to that region to buy wines. I used to say this also for the Valtellina of the other tier. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Nice acidity, refreshing, light. This is the entry, not, not exactly, no, that's not the entry level, sorry. This is the, almost the upper scale of their wine, the Spanna. I like the tannins, how they refresh the teeth, they tight up it, but they are not bitter tannins, they are perfectly ripe. This is a wine that is supposed to go with some raw meat like tartar, beef tartar, or beef carpaccio, 
or you can go even with uh, some uh, a fillet steak, uh, not too fat, like a delicate fillet steak, but without sauce. Please don't put like strange barbecue sauce or like, mustard or whatever. Just leave it as it is, okay? Uh, if you can resist, please, just a simple plate with a beautiful, elegant, simple type of nebbiolo. Thank you. Last.